What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar My Tech, and in this video I'm going to show you how to virtualize Windows 10 in Proxmox in under 10 minutes. And if you follow along with the video, you'll be able to get it all done. And when it's all done, it's going to look something like this. So after you follow along, you'll be able to have your own Windows 10 machine. So it'll be look just like this, and you'll be able to use it and RDP into it. So stay tuned, and you'll be able to have your own machine just like this one. So before we can do anything, we need the Ubuntu, um, <laughs> we need the Windows 10 ISO. You can get that from Microsoft or however else you source your ISOs. And you need the Vert IO Win drivers. So it's super simple. You can just come over here, Vert IO drivers. You can type it, uh, Proxmox. And Proxmox actually has a page for it. I'll drop a link for this. And you can download the latest version from them and then you can get it in there. So now we're all set after you upload your drivers and your ISO, we can start making the machine. So we're going to click create VM. We're going to name it Win10 Test, because it's going to be a test machine for me. I'm going to click next. Now we're going to come over to the drive that we put our ISOs on. So mine is on my local drive, yours might be on a different one. I only have one drive in this machine. And then we're going to select the Windows 10. And then we're going to go to next. And now we're going to do, leave this default because that will work for us. we we'll click disks and you can change this around if you have something better, but I'm going to keep it default because that work, works for us for me. And then we have local LVM as our disk that we can put storage on. So I'm going to get 50 gigs. I'm not going to be using this really too crazy. It's just a test machine. If you're going to be using it as like a daily driver, make sure you give it more room. I have a Windows 11 VM that I use that I give 250, uh, 250 gigs because it's a daily driver. It has files on it, everything like that. Like I, so if you're going to be using this, give it the room you think you're going to need. You can always expand it later on and add another drive or whatever you might need. But it's always better if you do it off the start. So we're going to click next from here. And then for CPU, we're going to give it two cores. If you're going to be using it as a daily driver, I would give it more cores. Maybe four or even six if your machine can handle it. And only one socket because I don't want it using multiple sockets. I only have one socket on this server. Uh, if your server has multiple sockets and you want to really get into that, go ahead, but be familiar with that first. It's not usually something I touch. And another new feature in Windows, in the PVE 8 is that you can select a whole bunch of different CPU types. So AES wasn't an old type that you used to be able to select. And now you can see over here, we can select a ton of different ones. We have a bunch of new AMD versions with Epic chips and all different stuff. And then from Intel, we have a ton of new versions as well. But for Windows 10, I find that we scroll all the way down, we use host, it seems to work the best, so I'm going to stick with that. Uh, if you make Windows VMs in the past and you have something that works best for you, go ahead and use it. But this is what the best setup I find is. And all this other stuff, we're going to leave default. So we're going to click next. Uh, I do have advanced on, so you could check that off, and then you get these other options. So I'm going to give it 4096, and I'm going to give it a minimum of 1024. If you're going to be doing this machine as a, something you're going to be using more, give it more RAM if you can. If not, it is what it is. We're going to click next, and then we're going to leave all this default, and then we're going to click confirm. And we're not going to start it because we do need to add one more thing. So you can just confirm everything, make sure it's good, and then click finish. So we'll give it a second, and we can see our new machine is coming up. So now that the machine is up, uh, it's not on, we don't want to turn it on yet, but we do have it up, it's listed in our machines. We need to add one more thing, so we're going to come over to hardware, and now we're going to add a disk. So we're going to add a CD, DVD drive, and this is where we're going to add the driver. So we're going to come over and select our storage where our ISOs are, and we're going to select the Vert IO drivers, and we're going to click add. So now, you can see it's listed, and we're actually able to use it. So we're going to turn on this machine for the first time. We'll come into console, and as this powers on, we'll see how it goes. So as your VM comes up, if you get this purple screen with the menu on it, that means you did something right. If not, go back and watch the video again, and try to follow my settings more closely. Uh, it could be particular to your server that you're running off of. You might need to tweak some of the options a little bit. Like I said, the CPU type is really picky when it comes to making these Windows VMs. So I'm going to set my options. I want everything in English for United States. We're going to click Next. And we're going to click install. So now this is going to start going. And when we get the next menu, I'll be back. So of course, Windows wants to put an activation key in. Uh, this is for a home lab. So it's just for a quick test environment. I'm not going to put a key in. But if you're going to use this long term, I would put a key on it. Or if you have a, a KMS that you host that has keys in it, you can link that up later on. But right now, we're just going to use I don't have a key. Look like that. 
and then we're going to select Windows 10 Pro because we want to be able to RDP into this machine because it is a VM. Home does not have RDP features, so if you do select it, you won't be able to RDP into your machine, and you'll have to come up with some other option like Tailscale or maybe Guacamole or something to be able to get into it. Um, education's a limited lockdown version of it. It's purposed for school, so it has certain features that the other versions of Windows don't. I wouldn't recommend using it, and Home isn't really worth it. We'll click Next. So now we have the EULA. I'm going to accept that. And then we're going to do a custom install because we need to add the driver. So I'm going to add the driver. I'm going to browse for it. And you can see here's my vert IO. So I'm going to click OK. Uh, we're actually going to do that again because I need to select it. So we're going to come down here. And then we need to find our right option. So I'm on AMD64. And we're going to come down here and we're going to select Win 10. So you can see we have that. We're going to click Next. And it's going to come through. It's going to scan the drivers through. So now that the drivers are scanned through, you can see it. Actually, you can see the hard drive. So Windows isn't meant to be virtualized with Proxmox by default. It needs more drivers. So that's why we need to add the Vert IO drivers. So now with them in, we can actually see the disk and then we can finish doing the install. I'm going to click Next. And now it's going to start doing the install. It's going to take some time, so we'll be back when it's all done. So as the install goes through, you'll see the menus change, and then you'll get this other screen saying getting ready. Uh, it's going to do some more work, and then when it's back, we'll be able to keep going with the install. So we'll be back when this one's done. So after we get through all the menus and it does all the install process, now we can actually go through and finish setting this up. So you can click your region that you're in. I mean, the United States, so I'm going to pick that. We'll click yes. And we're going to keep going through with this setup. So we're going to select our keyboard layout. I'm going to click US. Uh, I don't want to add a second layout. Uh, they're going to probably pull a sneaky on you, and it kind of looks like this should be yes, but it's not. I'm going to click skip. So when we get to this part, it's going to ask you to connect to a network, and the trick is going to be to say, I don't have a network. Um, a network probably won't come up yet because we do need to add the drivers. But if it does, you want to say, I don't have a network, because then it's going to have you try to make a Microsoft account and sign in with that. So I'm going to click, I don't have a network or internet. So after you say you don't have internet, it's going to want you to connect to the internet, but we can't because the VM doesn't have access to it yet. So we're just going to continue with limited setup. So it's going to ask who's using this computer. So Barmine is going to use this computer. Click next. And then make a good password. So make sure you give something you're going to remember. I like to use simple ones on VMs that are internal. Click next. So we're going to give it the password again. And then we're going to do password. Uh, challenge questions so make it something simple you're going to remember so I like to just keep going with whatever my password is or something good that I'm going to remember I just use the same one for all of them uh, it's not good if you're going to make it like a public machine but for something simple like this it's good I'll click next and now it's going to keep processing through now I like to turn all this stuff off I don't like all the Windows diagnostics and all that stuff always running. So this was a trick I learned at one of my internships years ago. This is how we always set up our computers. We like all the privacy, so we're going to turn everything off. We're going to click Accept. I don't want Cortana, so I'm going to click Not Now. And then we're pretty much almost there. So it's going to say Hi. It's going to process through. And then hopefully another minute or so we'll be all done. So we'll be right back. So after a few more minutes, it will finish setting up. And I can see we're at our desktop. So we're going to click maybe later, and now we are ready, but you notice we don't have a network, so we do need to install that. So I'm going to open up File Explorer, I'm going to come over to My PC, and we need to run the drivers. So we're going to come in here, and we need to find the network drivers. So, so now we need to add the network drivers. So you can see I actually just did it, so I have a network. But when you first get into your Windows VM, you're not going to have a network, because there's no drivers for it. So we're going to right click on the start icon, or you could hit Windows key X. Um, it probably won't work because I'm in a VNC session, but if you right click on it, it'll open it up and then we're going to come over to device manager. So after you come into device manager, we're going to come over here to network ad uh, driver, a uh, network adapter, sorry. And as you can see, I have the driver, so it's going to be able to see it, but you should see something that just says ethernet adapter. And up here, we're going to click update driver and we're going to browse for my drivers. So I'm going to browse, and we're going to come over here, and we're going to find the disk that has the Vert IO drivers, and you're just going to select it once. Don't worry about going through all this. It'll actually scan through it, and it should find it. If it doesn't, 
You'll just have to kind of scroll through here and find the net drivers. Top of my head, I don't remember which one's which, but you should be fine if you just click OK, and then it'll scan it, and then you could just go right through here, click Next. It'll search through all the drivers, and here it is, so I'm all good. So now that we have the network drivers all working, we're all good. We do need to do one more thing. We need to turn on remote desktop. So we need to come over here to remote desktop settings. So we'll just do remote desktop settings. And here we actually need to turn on RDP. So we can actually RDP to the machine. So we're just going to enable RDP. We're going to click confirm. And now we're all good. And you might want to turn off sleep. So I'm going to do power and sleep. I don't like my machines going to sleep, and especially a VM because then you can't get into it, you gotta wake it back up. So I'm gonna turn off that so it doesn't lock or anything, and we're all set. So now we have a Windows 10 machine that we're able to RDP into, and it's a VM running off of Proxmox, so now you'll be able to RDP into it, and you have your own Windows 10 machine, and then after you're all done, you can actually come back into hardware and you could unmount the CD-ROM with the third I.O. drivers. Make sure you don't, un you can really unmount that one too. But now you have that, so you're all done. So I appreciate everybody for watching. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, it's helpful just to be able to virtualize Windows 10. I did a Windows 11 video a while back. It's a little bit different because you got to add some different hardware. But Windows 10 is super simple to virtualize with Proxmox. Just follow the video. If you have any issues, make sure you follow the watch along the video again. I do show all the settings you'll need. As you can see, it worked. So if you follow mine, it should work for you. You might change it a little bit depending on what you need. If you're going to use the machine more often, you might give it more RAM or hard drive space or CPU cores. But typically, you're going to pretty much follow the video how I did it for the settings for the hardware, and you should be all good. I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and I made a Discord channel, so I'll drop a link below for that. People are joining. I appreciate it. And we're going to keep growing the community. So you can come in here. We can chat. We can have some conversation, whatever it might be. But like I said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.